Hey everybody, that's Bats here, bringing you our first new video in a while. Um, today we're going to look at how to force a Boros Legion deck in Guilds of Ravnica in Ranked Draft, because it switched to this two-week period where you have to draft in a specific set. Um, if you're trying to rank up, uh, one of the fastest ways to do it, at least in my personal experience, is to use Boros and Force Boros. Uh, most of the time it works well. The goal is just kind of to have a low curve, outrun your opponent, and then at the end of the day, use some kind of tap or unblockable effect that gets you through to win the game. Um, and at the very least, hopefully you can steal at least three wins with this. It doesn't always work, but most of the time you can. And often you'll go far beyond that, even up to seven win drafts. Of course, before we get into things, I have to ask you to click that like button and hit the subscribe button below. It really does help out the channel. Thank you guys very much. Let's get into it. So what I've done to make this a little bit easier is I've created my first tier list, and it's specifically for Boros Aggro, because a lot of the tier lists out there um, don't account for the fact that if you're trying to force Boros and you're going super aggro, um, that some cards are better than others and some cards are significantly worse than others. And so it kind of changes the way in which we draft. Um, there's a whole bunch of different cards we're going to discuss here. Let me pull up this tier list for a second. So here's the tier list. Um, and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to include a link to this in the description below. So make sure you check out that link. Um, but what I want to do is just kind of highlight and talk about some of the specifics um, before, we before we focus too much um, on the tier list. Um, so I want to talk about some of the things. Uh, you can see how the tier list is set up here. We have, um, we have an S class as usual, an A, B, C, D, F. Um, S class is of course outstanding. Uh, they're basically bombs that give you a good shot of winning the game if you can get them on the table. Um, A class are exceptional cards that you want to draft as soon as you see them. Um, B class are still very good cards that often can make the difference between winning or losing, um, and they're still really great picks. And you notice this is what makes Boro Aggro so powerful is that there are a lot of cards in these categories. Um, so it's all about option and curve. We also have C-Class. C-Class are still good picks. These are average cards, cards that um, you're still going to, you know, probably put in your deck. You still probably want in your deck, um, but that usually don't necessarily win the game by themselves, right? Um, but it is important to note, we do want some of these one drops uh, and two drops, so that way in an aggro deck, we can quickly, with Mentor, just overpower our opponent before they even get a chance to get established on the board. D-Class is our filler cards. They're cards that, you know, occasionally you may put these in your deck you're not really happy about it um, but you may get some value out of them uh, and then of course there's the f class and these are cards we just don't want to play almost at all ever um, because they're either really they have either really poor value or way over costed for their stats a few other quick things i'll point out um, you may notice that some cards are bolded those are cards in a category that i usually prioritize slightly higher than other cards that i come across um so you know for example if i were see, to see a swift blade vindicator um, i'm going to prioritize that higher than a healer's hawk right um just minor things like that uh that you have to you know sometimes use judgment on because you can't account for all situations anything with a, a three star Thing next to it simply means I usually uh, would only pick one or two of those um, and often picking more than one lowers the value so as soon as you pick the first one uh, the second one becomes a B or a C on the tier list um, so for example I almost never want more than one swath cutter giant it's a uh, it's a B tier already and two of them you're just you're not gonna be able to play them and if you do you've probably already lost by the time you've been able to get those on the board um, so so yeah I don't want to run through every single card on this list because that would get crazy. But what I do want to do is talk about um, that the tier list isn't, and almost this is true for almost every tier list, right? Is uh, these aren't definitive orders. Um, sometimes you have to look for synergies in your deck. So, for example, if you get a uh, rock charger that gives other creatures f flying, all of a sudden, hammer dropper, which is a, a C class card in our tier list jumps at least up one tier if not two tiers um, because all of a sudden you can get a five two with mentor in the air through while he's mentoring something else right and that's just outstanding um but by himself hammer dropper is a five two with mentor and odds are he's going to die the first time you attack with him um and so you know for the you know there are other things that might be better in his slot all right so let's take a look at some of these cards from our tier list here 
Um, I'm not going to go through everything. I'm just going to hit some highlights, some of the main ones that I really, really like and really think are worth discussing. So um, most of the S-Class cards, you know, Dawn of Hope, um, it's an interesting pick. It's cheap. Um, and while it actually usually has later game value, it can serve as a drawing engine and a blocker engine and make you a bunch of 1-1s, which at the end of the day, that's just valuable. It's hard to pass that card when you see it. Um, I'm not sure it's as valuable as some of the other cards in this deck, but I can definitely say that Dawn of Hope has won me multiple games just by playing the card and being able to get the value from the 1-1s when you don't have anything else to cast um, or draw cards when you need to. Um, Response Resurgence... Response Resurgence is just an excellent card. Um, you know, it has its, its cheap ability, but Resurgence is really where the, the payoff is at, right? For five mana, you, you get an extra attack phase, and your creatures gain first strike and vigilance. So, um, in a Boros aggro deck, you know, that card, two attacks in a row, can sometimes make a, a clear difference at victory. So if you get that, it's a bomb. Chance for Glory works pretty much the same, except it's a little more dangerous. It's cheaper, uh, but you can't be wrong, because if you're wrong, you lose the game. But again, two attack phases right in a row when your creatures gain indestructible, I mean, that's just really, really good. Arc like Phoenix, he's actually not really a Boros card. Um, he's more of an Izzet card, but again, a 3-2 haste flyer. Um, so he has some evasion. Really good and going to sneak in that damage really, really quickly. And occasionally, um, I don't think I've ever had it happen, actually, but occasionally it is possible to pull him back from the graveyard, right? If you have, if you just happen to have your three instants or sorceries on hand, um, you know, you, you might be able to do it. You might get that added value. Um, Aurelia, Templar of Justice, is just a bomb in this deck because she's a, a four mana cost flyer that, um, you know, that has Mentor and can give uh, Vigilance and Trample to cre other, your other creatures. Uh, she's just excellent. Um, Experimental Frenzy. Uh, I've actually never had the ability to draft that in uh, one of my Boros decks, um, but it seems like it is just a good card because it's the same thing that'll happen in Mono Red, right? Is you run out of steam, and now all of a sudden you switch to, hey, I'm just casting off the top of my deck. And your deck is usually so cheap, your curve is so low, um, that you're just going to win games because you're going to be able to get out three or four things on a turn. Um, risk factor. People are mixed on this card just in general, but I have found this card to be a huge payoff because the idea is that um, some people think that it's not as good as it is because you're giving your opponent the choice and they can always make the choice that's better for them. So the first time you cast it, if they, they're high enough life, they're going to say, hmm, you know, I don't, I don't care. I'll just pay the life. Um, and if they're really low on life, they're going to say, well, I'm not going to pay the life. You can just draw your cards. Uh, the issue is, is with the, with the jump start, it's dealing up to eight damage. I mean, it's dealing nearly half their life total in a game. And any way you spin it, that, that's amazing. Um, and if they let you draw three cards, if they can't take it and decide to let you draw three cards, that's phenomenal too. So what makes this card so great is, so your opponent gets to choose, that's fine. But both sides are fantastic for you. So who cares if your opponent gets to choose when both sides are overwhelmingly powerful? Um... And, you know, one card that can draw you six cards or uh, deal eight damage to your opponent, that's pretty solid. Um, so let's look at A tier here. Cards in A tier uh, are excellent cards. Um, it's like Swift Blade Vindicator, right? Um, it's a card that when paired with some of the mentor abilities and some of the, some of the combat tricks like Take Heart, all of a sudden... Um, this can do massive damage to your, to your opponent. The double strike and trample together can be unstoppable, right? Um, Legion War Boss is a great card. Um, it's debatable whether or not this belongs in S. Some people might put it there. Um, the only reason I don't is because he's still relatively fragile, and the one ones don't matter if your opponent has a superior board state um, at all, because, right, they, they have to attack in, so they just die to, to some bigger blocker. Um, and you can't send your war boss in to mentor them. So he's a, it's a good card, especially if you already have the advantage. Um, but once you don't, it kind of can fall out of place. Um, cards like Con Cosmetronic Wave uh, are just excellent in this deck. Uh, because uh, usually what ends up happening is you get some steam early on in the game. You, you, know, you, you hit your opponent for like one damage on turn two, and then another couple on turn three. And then maybe if you're lucky, you've hit him 
hit him for like six on turn four. Um, and then all of a sudden the game might stall out a little bit. And so you come in and sweep in with Cosmotronic Wave, which has two amazing effects. The first one is to make things unblockable, in which case often you'll just win the game, right? You just finish them off for the rest of the damage. And two, you can also use it defensively um, to deal with other Boros decks because a lot of the Boros creatures have one toughness. And so that one damage from Cosmotronic Wave will just sweep the board. Simple as that. Um, and that's fantastic, right? Basically, you want a curve that looks like this. You want a low curve. Really, you don't want any cards in the, uh, the, the five drop slot if you can help it. You might have one, maybe right? You want to be really high on your two drops. Um, you want to have lots of one and two attack creatures because uh, the the idea is that you're going to come in with one of your uh, mentor creatures, the Wojak bodyguard, the blade instructor, and um, you know, you're going to, you're going to power up your deck in a way that they can't, they can't keep up with. And so you need these two drops to do that. You may also run a much lower mana curve. I often run this deck with 14 or 15 lands so I can play more creatures. Um, and so I can just keep the threats coming, right? Because honestly, um, you get enough threats out there, even with the, the game stalls and you get a Cosmotronic Wave, you just kind of win. One big mistake that people make with this Boros deck is there are a lot of big heavy hitters in Boros, but the problem is they're expensive, so you may not get the mana for them. And by the time the game gets to that stage, they're not they're not going to be good enough so you know if you end up with three big creatures in hand in your opening hand you're you're, you're already done for right synergies are really important here um so you have to use a little bit of i mean for lack of a better word i guess common sense when you're drafting things um so you usually only want about six ish non-creature spells give or take um certain spells are too slow so for example Luminous Bonds is a C on this list because um, it's still a it's still a, a playable decent card, um, but at the end of the day, you're you're sacrificing a creature drop for that um, at sorcery speed, and often that's not good enough. Um, and Luminous Bonds in particular doesn't prevent that creature from using its activated ability, so many times uh, it just it's just not good enough. And Demotion will get the job done much faster, right? One cost mana where you can still slide out another two drop creature and keep putting pressure on your opponent. Some of the board wipes, while some people may prioritize the board drops higher, um, and I can understand why they might, uh, I didn't because what what I found is that those board drops often just didn't help me. Uh, I've either was too established. I was either already too established on board myself, um, and it was going to do me more damage than it did them, or if I would try to hold the board drop in hand and let them uh, overcommit to the board, um, certain decks like Boros Aggro can reestablish too quickly. So even by letting them overcommit, me taking the turn to cast that, they were already you know already had a strong board again by the time I was able to cast creatures the turn after that. So most of the time, those kind of cards just aren't going to do it. So I think that's basically going to do it. Uh, thanks for watching. If you if you enjoyed the video, please give the video a like. It really helps out. And consider hitting the subscribe button as well. All that stuff matters a whole bunch, um, especially as we try to make new content. Remember, the description to this tier list is in the link below. Um, you can check me out on Twitch under the username That's Bats. Hope to see you there.